Unlike a red flag, a yellow flag means proceed, but with extreme caution. Skin. It's important to note that women are fundamentally different from men. That goes all the way to our chromosomes and the hormones that course through our veins. So some of the things that might be challenges for women might not be challenges for men. I've heard women, for instance, say, how come men play outside all day or boys play outside all day, roll around in the dirt, barely wash good, but their skin is always perfect. Whereas we have skin routines, we're exfoliating, we're using astringent, we're face washing three times a day and we still have skin issues. How, Sway? Take a few steps back. You ain't got the answers, man. You ain't got the answers, Sway. Well, that's because women's hormones are different. You can add on top of that things like PCOS, which throw your hormones even more out of whack. However, I have a very high expectation for a woman's ability to care for herself, primarily because when I think of the male-female mother-father dynamic as it relates to children, there are certain things that I'm, as the man, tasked with to teach our kids, and there are certain things that you as the woman are tasked with to teach our kids. So in some sense, you need to be better at this than me. So fellas, I would pay attention to her skin. How well maintained is her skin? Does she have a skincare regimen, routine? Is she cognizant of the environment and how that affects her? Her diet and how that affects her? Or does she think she's just one of the guys and she can do what we do? Bye, Felicia. Damn <laughs> <laughs> because again, that carelessness is what's going to raise your children. Also, it's a good indicator of her level of stress, right? And this is where we have to empathize with women a bit. Women go through a lot from their menstrual cycle to work, to school, to the insecurity that they generally feel just being female and being vulnerable in a way that we are not as men. But with all that taken into account, you can tell when somebody takes care of themselves and when somebody doesn't. And one of those indicators is the largest organ on our bodies, which is our skin. This is gonna rub some people the wrong way, pun intended, tattoos. Personally, I am not a fan of tattoos on women. When you look into the history of tattoos, tattoos were reserved for criminals, criminal organizations, whether we're talking about the Yakuza in Japan, whether we're talking about some of the mobs, but it was a way to identify yourself, your tribe, even with Polynesian culture, and distinguish yourself from the opposition. But nowadays it's mainstream. It's a way of self-expression. For me, the reason why it's not a full red flag is because some of those things are valid. However much we might like to think we're not, we're all influenced by pop culture. We're all influenced by going with what's going. So most people get tattoos because it's the in thing to do. And then they'll ascribe some sentimental value to validate either the price, the pain, or even having this permanent ink on their body. I am always wary of women in particular who are overly tatted. And I call it subway tats. And you know what I'm talking about. The woman who has her entire back tattooed, her chest tattooed, her arms tattooed, her thighs tattooed. You know, those tattoos that you start to ask the question, number one, how long did this take? Number two, how did you endure this level of pain? And number three, what position did you have to be in to even get this tattoo done? And what amount of clothing was on your body when this happened? It's something to be cautious of. Maybe this is a woman who really likes pain. Maybe some aspect of her trauma, her childhood has given her an affinity for pain. So it's not even the artistic aspect, but it's the pain aspect that she's addicted to. Maybe this is a woman who is overly concerned about how she's perceived by pop culture. She wants to be in the in crowd. She wants to be at the cool kids table. Now, imagine how that plays out being married to somebody like that. Maybe this is a woman who is attention seeking. And fellas, we've met these women who, because they want to show you their cool tattoo, they'll damn near strip naked, even though this is the first time you guys are meeting. If she's an attention whore, chances are she's also a whore whore. Be cautious. Or, especially when it comes to the tattoos that are typically found on men, you know, the arm tattoos and the chest tattoos and, you know, those prison style, I'm a tough guy type of tattoos. Maybe this is a masculine woman in her masculine energy. And subconsciously, she tatted her body 
to match her internal disposition. So even though some of y'all might fight me on this, I know some guys who love tattoos on a woman. It turns them on. Personally, it's not my preference. You don't see luxury cars all tricked out. Usually it's hoopties that are tricked out. Usually you don't see a tent on a Rolls Royce. There's a reason for that. There's a reason why bust down Rollies don't sell well, but the plain Janes retain their value. Because again, it's not just about how it looks today. It's about how it's going to look 50 years from now. So be cognizant of that, fellas. Does she have this little cute tattoo that she got with her friends or her family? That, okay. But if this is somebody who's tatted from, she got neck tats and this, this and that, I would be cautious. Makeup. I have a theory that this new makeup trend that we're seeing of faces that are beat to the gods and the big eyelashes and the contoured nose and contoured cheekbones and all the extra stuff is a consequence of women embracing the cross-dressing community. A lot of those men are makeup artists. They're stylists. They're estheticians. And my theory is that they've so normalized the drag look that they can now more easily blend in amongst natural biological women. So fellas, pay attention. Is this a woman who can't leave the house without makeup? It might mean that she lacks skincare. You know, those crunch bar face people where they're just piling stuff on top of the problem instead of actually treating the problem. Maybe that's how she handles problems in her life. The same way she handles her face. Let's just cover it up. Maybe this is a masculine woman who's also in drag. And you see women, especially these days, they are masculine as hell. And they overcompensate by being overtly sexual, by being always made up, by having the boobs pushed up and the butt stuck out and everything to overemphasize her femininity because her essence is actually masculine. Pay attention to this. Also, is this a woman who wears cheap makeup when she does? One of my favorite quotes is, don't be penny wise and pound foolish, which means that don't, in the name of being frugal and cheap, cheat yourself in the long run by getting something of poor quality that's going to cost you more later on. So those girls that you hug when you have a white t-shirt on and now your shirt is ruined, she don't know what she's doing. Those girls that it's kind of obvious that her makeup is breaking her out, she don't know what she's doing. She doesn't have a skincare routine. She doesn't wipe off her makeup properly at the end of the day. Pay attention to these things because her lack of attention to detail, her lack of competence in this thing that she's doing is going to show itself in other aspects of her life that in some way, shape or form, you're going to be forced to deal with. Lastly, does this woman suffer from RBF? If you guys don't know, that's resting bitch face. It's become popular these days, partly because... Some women are trying to avoid wrinkles and smiling gives you wrinkles, partly because it's part of the bad bitch aesthetic. I'm slaying, I'm killing these hoes, so stone face at all times, female stoicism. But I would suggest it's deeper than that. I would suggest that women who suffer from this might have a joy deficiency in their soul. And it might be a result of something like depression. It might be a result of a traumatic experience that just changed and altered their disposition. And I hate the fact that we've made it cool and it's now part of pop culture to have rest in bitch face. It's not even an acronym, RBF. But I think it's more than meets the eye. So fellas, if you're a happy dude and you want a woman to bring joy into your life, a woman with notorious or malignant RBF might not be the one for you. And at the very least, it's worth a conversation because this idea that my face is just like that is bullshit. And I'm tired of us popularizing that damn paradigm. Nails. I know you guys have seen those nails on some really ghetto women where you think to yourself, how does she wipe her ass? At a certain length, those nails become a safety hazard. At a certain length, those nails become counterproductive to personal hygiene. Did you wash your hands? And a woman who's okay with that might just be a woman that you need to move around. It might mean that she's 
eccentric. This is a woman who's living in La La Land. She's living in her own fairy tale. This is a woman who's physically 30, but mentally 12. And that goes along with all the crazy designs and colors and 3D, etc. Again, it's a yellow flag because it doesn't necessarily mean she's a bad woman, but it's a good indicator of some of her other more meaningful characteristics, for better or worse. Pay attention to her nails. Are they clean? Are they simple? Is her hand moisturized? I remember in uh, the Ray Charles movie that Jamie Foxx played Ray Charles, one of the ways that apparently Ray Charles could tell if a woman was beautiful was by feeling her hands. In my experience, that's not as valid, but it is, however, valid when it comes to a woman who takes care of themselves. So if you're like me, and that is of the utmost importance to you, pay attention to her hands. If her hands are too much, she's too much. If her hands are dry, dirty, flaky, she might be out of touch with her femininity. But if her hands and her extremities are taken care of, this is a woman who not just takes pride in her appearance and self-care, but she may just love herself and makes loving her easy. Whew. Send this to your boys, have conversations about it, share stories. Fathers, send this to your sons, have conversations about it, share stories. And as we continue to elaborate on some of these conversations. My hope is that we can establish a strong and prosperous black community full of strong men who are intentional about the women that we choose and the behavior that we reward or that we stay far away from. Thank you guys for watching. Leave it in the comments, run these likes up, hit the subscribe button on your way out, check out some of the other content, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.